Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's video, I wanted to explore the idea of when it's time to break up, even when you wanna get married. I think there's this narrative that I've seen lately where people want to get married and so they think that if you're ready to get married, you should choose the person who's most accessible to you, the person who's willing to marry you. But I found this story on Reddit's uh, Am I the Asshole? And I thought it was really interesting and I want to share some snippets with you and then discuss it. Am I the asshole for calling my friend's proposal disrespectful? All right, so here's the deal. My friend, M27, decided to propose to his girlfriend of three years, Dina, F26. The two met at a bar pre-COVID, and were just chatting at first but it quickly led to more and eventually the two of them moved in together and discussed marriage. Personally, I think they're a great match, and my friend, Stephen, has never been happier. He told me that he was planning to propose to Dina, and I was ecstatic. Well, the day of the proposal hits, and I called Stephen the next day, which was last night, to congratulate him. But he wasn't happy. He told me that Dina had said no. I was shocked, and asked if he knew why. He said that she didn't like how he proposed. Now here's the thing. I knew he was going to pop the question, but I didn't know how he was going to do it. He thought it would be romantic to propose at the place they met, yes. A bar. Already I could kind of see why she might not like that, but I decided to ask her privately because she and I have gotten to be close. She confided in me that it's because she told Stephen multiple times that she didn't want to have a public proposal, and that she was horrified he would do it at a bar of all places and that she felt disrespected that he didn't accommodate that. I told Stephen that his proposal was honestly really disrespectful and seriously kind of messed up, to which he told me I was being an insensitive ass and should be supportive as his friend rather than talking down on him, but I don't know if I'm wrong here. Am I the asshole for calling my friend's proposal disrespectful? The thing that stands out to me in this story is again, the lack of consideration that I keep seeing in proposals, in dating, in cohabitation. Everyone is gonna find their human differently and they're going to choose their person for different reasons. It's okay if people settle. It's okay if people do an arranged marriage. It's okay if people are just looking for financial gain. It's okay if, pe as long as everyone's on the same page, I really think it's okay. Now for me, I'm romantic, so I chose love, of course. I wanted to be with a person that I felt connected to, a consciousness that I felt understood me and would do life with me in a way that was harmonious, peaceful, um, and joyful. And I think that is a very specific kind of person. So of course, me being that category of person, observing this story about a guy who, though he loves his girlfriend, proposes to her in a way that she does not want, says to me that he doesn't really love the consciousness that she is, that his idea of romance is different than hers, that their compatibility level is different, that their desires are different. So in this story, we have a friend who's asking, are they the asshole for telling their other friend that their proposal was disrespectful? That's not as interesting to me. What's interesting to me is that the man chose in that situation to do the proposal the way that he thought it was best versus a proposal being for the other person, I suppose, as much as it is for him, if you're the one proposing, you really should think about the person you're proposing to. I had a homie who got married, was in love, and she specifically told her future husband not to propose to her in public. What did he do? He proposed to her in public. Even though my friend said yes to that marriage proposal, years later in hindsight after they got divorced, she did think to herself, maybe that was when she should have said no. But because they were so compatible, because they were happy together, she let things slide, things that he would do that weren't about her, that were more about him. And it made her realize in hindsight with wisdom that maybe those were the opportunities to end the relationship. But I know I can hear, I can hear the, the internet screaming, you know, when you're given a proposal, when a man is dedicated to you, that's the time to get married. And look, these men, they're probably not abusive. These men are probably good men. I know my friend's ex-husband was really, really wonderful, but... Even though you're wonderful, it doesn't mean you're exactly compatible enough to do life with a certain kinds of categories of people. In this case, someone who does want to end up with someone to do life with. Not next to, not in parallel, but literally with. This is very specific. When I say this, I don't mean roommate dating, where we go 50-50 on everything. We make our own life decisions separate from each other, but we happen to cohabitate. That's okay, but that's a very specific kind of relationship. The one I'm doing is a little bit more traditional, though very progressive. We share income, we share life goals, we kind of co like talk about what we're doing today, and then we go do our own things, of course, like I'm working right now, he's doing his own thing, but we do talk to each other about it versus in my past relationships, I think I was trying to do more of that parallel 
dating kind of relationship where I would say, what are you doing today? And I would tell him what I was doing today. But it's not the same as saying, what are we doing today? What does your schedule look like? What can we fit in together? What can we make sure we're doing together or separate? It's a very different vibe. So the second video that came to mind is what do you do when you've already said yes to the proposal, you're at the wedding, and then you decide not to stay married? I, even though you just got married like less than an hour ago. There was this video that went viral on the internet. I'm sure you guys saw it. And it was a man and a woman at their reception doing the cake, the cutting of the cake. And this is a tradition that I've never seen. And I've only ever been to Assyrian weddings. So I, I don't have the understanding of what a normal wedding is. And I've only been to a few weddings myself, but they've always been Assyrian weddings. So in this tradition, the groom shoves cake into the bride's face. I couldn't even imagine. I think I come from a bubble and a background where you don't do anything to humiliate the groom or the bride. So the idea that this is normal or okay is very strange to me. So I'm watching this video and of course I'm livid. She explicitly says to him right before eating the cake, do not shove it in my face. Now, of course, a lot of the replies to this video were so upset with him. A lot of the replies were so, you know, who is this man? He's so abusive. He violated her consent. I think we should consider that the audience watching was sort of 50-50, I think, in their reactions. Some understood her being upset, her walking away. Some were cheering him on. He obviously grew up in a bubble in which this was expected of him to be sort of funny at his wedding, to humiliate his bride. And she was supposed to be, I think, humorous about it. I've definitely seen couples that are humorous about getting the cake in their face. The women like tackle the men. So there is a subset of women and they are valid that want to have cake shoved in their face at their wedding. It's just not you and it's not me. Or maybe it's you. I don't know. Tell me in the comment sections down below, but it's not me. I do not want cake shoved in my face. I don't even want that much attention on me during my wedding. I mean, my partner and I have a very small ceremony planned. I mean, quite literally the smallest, most simple ceremony because uh, we're not very big on attention. I know I'm a YouTuber, but much like uh, every other YouTuber I know, we're all secretly introverts who live at home and talk to a camera. So we don't have to interact with people or have that much attention on us in real time. So I couldn't imagine dressing up, getting ready, feeling cute, and then my spouse shoving cake in my face and humiliating me in front of people, let alone just even if we were alone, it's not my vibe. But I don't want to condemn the groom and I don't even want to condemn the first guy that proposed inappropriately. I want to instead offer a sort of reassurance that it's okay to leave and it's okay to renegotiate and it's also okay to preemptively put things in place to allow this not to happen, not to occur. I think when I speak about marriage with my current partner when we were dating, it was very serious, right? We did like a courting style dating. The purpose was to get married. There was no interest in dating long term, two, three, four years. Like neither of us wanted to do that. We wanted to just either be married because we were so compatible or to move on with our lives. We're pretty old. I mean, in our 30s. So we have this understanding of ourselves at least. We have a goal in mind when dating. I think in these circumstances, maybe people were dating a little differently, but there is a serious conversation you can have with your partners. Hey, I'd really like to marry you. I want to make sure that we're on the same page in terms of that relationship. This is not a space for joking and this is not a space for misunderstanding. When I get married, I'm very serious about this. It's a commitment for life and I'd like to make sure that we're on the same page and how we're going to treat each other. I do not want to be humiliated at my wedding. So I'm just checking in with you. Are you okay not doing the cake smashing at the wedding? Because if this happens, I will very seriously divorce you. I am asking you to respect my consent and boundaries. This is a very different tone than, babe, you better not shove cake in my face. <laughs> I would be so mad. There is a tone of voice that I expect out of people when we're having serious conversations, but I don't think everyone has the tool and I think some people are afraid of being a mood killer. So one of the things I wanna encourage you to be is a mood killer, not a saucy bitch who's being, you better not shove cake in my face. Like not angry, but serious. I love you, please treat me with kindness and consideration. Please be thoughtful of me. It's about being thoughtful. And I think when I see these videos of these men or women who propose incorrectly or shove cake in people's faces, all I'm thinking is, where is the thoughtfulness gone? 
where is the love there? Can you explain it to me? Now, again, for every person that exists, there's a counterpart that's complimentary. There is a woman out there that wants to have cake shoved in her face. But see how this man and this woman were able to get married, end up at the reception, only to find out like they're not compatible? As far as I know, the internet could be lying, but this woman did file for divorce. You could say, oh my gosh, she ended this marriage over cake. What she ended the marriage over was consent, boundaries, respect, thoughtfulness. He broke her consent. And if he's willing to do it with cake, it begs the question of what else is he willing to do it for? Now, for some people, that question is outrageous. And that's true because there is a subset of group in which obviously he would never go beyond just the cake violation. But then there's a whole other subcategory of human that would use the cake as an indicator of what else they're willing to break consent over. Maybe it's sex next time. Maybe it's birth control next time. Maybe it's finances next time. And if you don't know, it could be very scary committing yourself to that. So keep in mind, this is just my advice. You don't have to take it, of course. I think it would be best to always talk about these things preemptively and to remind yourself that it's okay to leave even if you've made it all the way to the reception. All right, those are my thoughts. I just wanted to share them with you guys today because I am befuddled that this is the thing that happens, but it obviously does. And I just can't think of what I would have done with my life to get to this point, but people are getting there. And if we can stop a few of them from getting to that point, that'd probably be better for everybody, including the grooms. And then of course, I just wanna remind people that people are good even when they make mistakes. They're just kind of sloppy about it. So not everyone is an evil, abusive person, but I think that those people need to learn to be a little bit more considerate. Okay, talk to you guys soon, bye. My head in real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out Life is a fool. Dun, dun.